Hey. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm going to mute everyone just for a second. Um, so you guys already probably know the drill. We have the reaction button. And if you want to say something, ask something, just uh, click on raise your hand. And we're going to hear everyone. And Kevin and Ray, if you guys can unmute yourself because everybody is muted. So just click that button again to unmute yourself. So we have very special guests today. Uh, Martin reached out to Kevin and Ray, and we might have another special guest. He's going to be a surprise. Hopefully later he'll join us. Um, but if you don't know Kevin and Ray by some chance, like which I'm sure you all do, uh, they are the hosts of Needles at the Ready podcast on YouTube, uh, which is a very popular YouTube channel. And you guys should you know what you have to do, right? You have to go, subscribe, follow them on Instagram and all that good stuff. So welcome to our little uh, corner of the um, YouTube. And um, I just saw you guys at Ryan back. So it feels like we just had our little reunion. Yeah. yeah. But tell us a little bit, like, is that the first time you're participating in MCAL or have you done it before? No, so we've both done it. My very first one, I think our both of our very first ones was the Slip Stravaganza, yeah. which by far is my absolute favorite. That's Though favorite. this one, you know, looking ahead at the finished object, looks fantastic. I um, saw two thought I did a little shriek and I was like, oh, I know, be- I had no idea like where it was going to go. I thought it was going to be like a long scarf, not to ruin anything if anybody's not gone ahead, but... Uh, oh, but pe- pe- people know that they know they're going to be spoilers. Okay, it's, fine. it's yeah, it's epic. Like picking up from both, it looks really, really cool. Um, so I think this one's going to be excellent. And then, um, yeah, we did slip Shrevaganza. We did. Um, I think we've done three. This is our fourth. Your fifth. No. Well, let. Mm... Your fourth and a half. Yeah, I didn't finish last year's. So it's still a work in progress. Yeah. I have the yarn sitting behind me for for last year's, but I haven't cast that one on just yet. So there's no time. Where are you in this uh, MCAL? Because you've been busy traveling to um, all the things, traveling to Rhinebeck and the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. So where are you? And I'm just gonna add another um, surprise. Uh, so Michael, if you guys, uh, hello, who is the host? Hey. Of, uh, Peace for Peace Crafting on YouTube and he's also on Instagram. And if you guys like don't when when we stop spotlighting you, if you can just put all your information in the chat, that would be great. So people can follow you on Instagram and follow you on YouTube. So sure. back to Kevin and Ray. So where are you right now with this one? Because you've been busy traveling to Ryan back and stuff. So we're both on Clue 2. I'm about halfway done with Clue 2. Um you just started Clue 2? Yeah, so I just started, but I have to tink back my brioche because I made some mistakes and I dropped a stitch and stuff. So the brioche is just going to come out and I'm going to pick back up from there. Yeah. I um, think that that's really sad, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so on, I finished the first brioche section. Um, and now I'm working on setting up for the bobbles on Clue 2. And then I'll do that next brioche section. Yeah. For that. Love those mm-hmm. colors. And Thank you, you guys have done brioche before, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's been a while since I've done brioche. I tried to do brioche again um, in the summer. And Michael can attest that I struggled. I can't do brioche socializing. I have to, I has to be a private Violet. moment for me. Yeah. Yeah. To be able to do it it's a great flow i love it and it's not difficult but i i can't talk at the same time which could be a challenge to me around other people michael how about you where are you with this m call okay can you hear me mm-hmm. yeah i love that that's like the universal i'm on a zoom call is can you hear me <laughs> um, <laughs> i am actually not much further than the boys i am on the second bit of brioche um wait let me just untangle myself i 
had a moment. Um, so I'm here. Oh, you're so good. Um, this yeah, I'm enjoying the colors and the little mohair that I'm using just changes the green ever so slightly, which I think is fun. Um, I too had a little bit of trouble with the brioche because I have decided that I'm going to take this on the train while I'm commuting, mm -hmm. which why would you do that? Because <laughs> why not? Um, so on the way home yesterday, I would actually, once I got to work yesterday, I did a row and counted because the brioche is like working out fine, but I'm two stitches off. So I'm like, I'm just going to finish. And then once I get to the garter, I'll just add those two stitches. And like, I don't care. It's fine. It's going to be fine. No yeah. one's going to know. And no. if they if they notice, they're too close to you. Right. You know, get away. <laughs> yeah. Michael, are you following like the videos? So you know how the final show is going to look like? Or Yeah. So right before... Um, Right before I left for Rhinebeck, like Clue 3 came out. And so I looked at the video and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I'm definitely not going to work on this while I'm in New York. Like, it's totally fine. And then I today's Saturday. Um, Then on this Thursday, I woke up because I had to go teach a class really early. And I looked at it and I was like, okay, I don't even care that I'm going at my own pace and not keeping up with like what's going on. But the end product, it just made me really excited. I feel like this year's, I I bought a kit for last year and then ended up not doing it just cause like life, life sometimes. That's what um, the boys just said just before you arrived. <laughs> yeah, like whoopsies. Um, And my twist and turns is sitting in a permanent, well not permanent, it's just sitting in a really, <laughs> in a really long time out. So this one has really like reinvigorated me to like get back to it. It's just so fun. It's very interesting. I think like if you've seen what the final clue is, just it was really smart to go in the direction that he went in. I'm like, oh, that's going to be so fun picking up and then like decreasing. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. Yeah. Super excited about picking up all those 650 stitches on the outside to do that. We <laughs> We don't have to talk about that. <laughs> no, and we don't we have to worry about, about that for weeks. You've got to worry about that when you get home. We haven't got to worry about that for weeks. I'm more, I'm more concerned about running out of yarn um, because I'm on clue four on the inside and I'm like good chunk in on oh. the main color. So I I mean, I'm definitely, I, do, I definitely have enough to finish the inside of the clue four. Yeah. I'm really concerned that I don't have enough yarn for the edging there. Mm. So I have a uh, matching color more here at home. Mm. And I think that that's what's going to happen on the outside, but I have to get home first. So if you guys didn't notice, my background is a little different today from usual and from last week. So last Wednesday, I was in North Carolina visiting my daughter. And today I'm visiting my parents in Miami. So this has been um travel across the states <laughs> with an mcal <laughs> situation so i didn't bring any more hair so i'm not doing more hair there for the inside just because i don't have more hair and for, right. uh, yeah. correct me if i'm wrong i don't really know but there is not too many options as far as yarn stores in florida <laughs> so i'll wait until i get home for any dares with more hairs are you doing more hair there we are not. I I'm not a huge mohair fan. I love how it looks and feels for other people, but for me, for some <laughs> reason, I just I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't do it for me. Like the the Gambier that we wore over to Rhinebeck that Kevin's wearing now, the yarn has mohair in it. It just it got for me. I don't know. It got everywhere. I have really bad allergies. Not that it like exacerbates my allergies, but. Mm -hmm. It tickles my nose and it just yeah. it kind of throws me into a a weird space. Like I can't feel comfortable in it. Well, remember the Rhinebeck sweater that I wore on the hill, the bright pink one. So it mm -hmm. has more hair. Let me tell you, I found that more hair everywhere. It was yeah. on the top <laughs> of my hotel. It was on the back seat of the car. It was on the back strap. It's just like it's uh, gets places. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it. And I don't care about all that. I'm just like, oh, it's fine. Like, that's what lint rollers are for. Also, too, as a bearded person, like, 
it's gonna get in there. I don't care. I just decide that it's gonna make me look festive. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we have you here at like a later point of MCAL, tell us about your approach to picking yarn. Like, are you team kit? Are you team uh, use your own stash? And how did you go? I mean, especially since can like you guys are dyers, so you can dye your own yarn. Does that make it more difficult? How did you go about picking yarn? So typically I am not a kit person. Um, I like to put together my own color palettes. And I actually wasn't sure if I was going to do this one. I picked my colors when at one of my trunk shows and I saw them side by side. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm doing the um, MCAL and these are my colors. And <laughs> that's what it's going to be. That was typical for me too. I typically will go for a kit because I am colorblind. So it makes it easier. Like I'm, I can see colors. I just can't sometimes differentiate between like reds and greens, like those different shades in between gets a little difficult mm -hmm. for me. Um, so the kit for me makes things easier. And if I can see it, like it's mine, so it looks nice in my eyes, but I know if, if I get a kit, they'll be coherent, mm -hmm. um, yeah. or cohesive, but same thing with Kevin, we were at, uh, the trunk show and it was our very first time really getting a chance to see Kevin's yarn all spread out on a table, like in one spot. Cause otherwise they're stored here in the house in like bins and stuff. Um, so to be able to see some of the combinations of his yarn next to each other was really inspirational. And that's what we're both doing. And we're going to be able to use them as samples for future trunk shows as well. So I opted for one of his bases or one of our bases with BFL. So this is a BFL nylon blend. And Kevin shows a different base, um, but it's, sorry. yeah, it's 8515 base. Yeah. Merino nylon, nylon. and super fine, uh, extra fine Merino, yeah. or whatever. It's super soft. It's amazing. Um, but it'll be, it was nice to see the contrast between the bases and then to be able to use his colors. Um, so that was, it was easy to pick it out because it looks like a pumpkin. So I'm happy with, with that. Is there any envy between the two of you? Like, oh, I should have picked those colors kind of thing. For me, yes. Oh, yes, I will no. tell you, yes. We'll lay it all out, no. the truth. It's time for truth. Because Kevin, I think, does a great job creating a palette. And I do get envy when I see his colors choices together. I will say the second MCAL that we did, the one with the shrimps. What Shawlography. Was Shawlography. Shawlography. I wanted to get creative with my color palette. And I went way over the top. Um, I, you know, Steven can go over the top and it looks really, really great. I go over the top and it looks like a circus tent and which is a great look. However, I can't really pull off, um, wearing it. So unfortunately it's one of my least worn shawls. It looks oh, neat. Okay. Yeah. But, um, so I'm going to stick with kits or, um, suggestions from my friends and my husband. To be okay. fair, a lot of people want to go and join the circus. So like, just wear True. it. It's okay. Right. <laughs> you can wear it at the next event that we're all at, Michael. I'm okay. sure you'll get it'll look different on you, I'm sure. Yeah, I'll wear it. Michael, how about you? Do you use kits usually or do you go with your own? I'm <clears throat> I'm usually team vibes. Like I bought a kit last year, which was the first time that I bought a kit for one of the M cows. But I yeah, I just go on the vibe. Like, what am I really feeling in the moment? And I was on a work trip um, in Seattle and I got to stay with the guys of Fiber Hustle. And so they dye yarn as well. And so I got to like go through their inventory stash. What I, it's more inventory, not stash. Um, Fiber Hustle. <laughs> yeah. And so I put together some colors and just like threw up a thing on Instagram, like, oh, what are people feeling? Um, Cause I think I might do this. It was very last minute. Um, and so, yeah, I picked out this nice green. It's like a sagey, dusty sagey green and this gray and was just like, all right, the people have spoken. I'm vibing with this. I think that's what I'm going to go for. Um, yeah, usually I go, I try to incorporate a little bit of bright into it, but I wanted this one to be a little more chill. So I think adding in the mohair is just the right amount of like, funsies that I wanted for this one. Yeah. 
Well, that's the bit that's worrying me with mine is that my color choices are completely different to anything that I would usually wear. And like, there's nothing subtle. Oh my God. Him. It's so it's good. Gorgeous. It's my, it's my, I'm living my best wicked life. So oh, it, yeah. <laughs> it's my Elfie Glinda homage. But yeah, it's completely different to anything that I would just usually wear. So I'm like, I'm just going to have to rock it. Wait, can we all hold our shawls just for the cover? And we'll take a quick snapshot of that. I'm in the middle of a row. Hold on. One second. Let me turn it around. Just the peak. <laughs> cool. You know, we have to do some uh, YouTubing thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's business after all. <laughs> well, talking about <laughs> YouTubing thing, right? For Martin and I, it became a huge community building event because mm -hmm. some of the people who are with us today have been with us for three years now. I mean, there are some new people that always join for the Zooms and then there are some people that have been with us from the very first uh, Zoom we've done. And it became this like sort of collaborative environment and we all want to know like if Catherine is on the call and she has to run or if Joy is going to crochet her thing. And it's like, it's became this uh, sort of like, we already know these people and we following their story, they following our, ours. Yeah. What is it for you? Like what attracts you to the MCAL? Um... I think first it's just Steven himself. Like I remember when I first started knitting, especially as a male knitter, he was one of the first male designers that I came across. And it was especially his really early work um, where it was like the long scarf like shawls. They weren't these extravagant pieces. And those were the first shawls that I made were probably his first couple of designs. Um, but the reason I do it now is I typically learn something mm -hmm. every time I do one of his shawls. Like there's something I haven't done before. Like his shawl is, shawlography was the first time I did brioche. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is actually the first time I'm, I think it's the first time I'm doing this bubble stitch. Same. You know, so it's, it's, I just do something different every time I knit one of his shawls. Yeah, I feel the same way. And I think that his patterns and the way that his personality is and the YouTube videos, it makes it very accessible and you don't feel intimidated. You know, I love the coaching that um, take your time with this. If you drop a stitch, who cares? You know, if you add a stitch here, add a stitch there, because he makes it fun, you know, and that it's it's our hobbies, right? Like this is what we love to do. And it's like we're passionate about it. It shouldn't feel like a chore or my God, I got to get through this. How am I going to get through this? Like, I just like that. Like the whole, like Michael was saying, like the whole vibe, just that, yeah. that whole vibe of, of his patterns. And then the MCAL specifically, because he walks you through everything and makes it very accessible. And that's it. And people often say to me like, oh, I could never do one of those. It looks really complicated. I'm like, as long as you can knit and purl, increase mm -hmm. and decrease, he'll teach you the rest of it. If there's a stitch or a technique, if there's something a bit complicated, like a brioche, there's always a non-brioche option. It's just just giving people the confidence to say, you, know, you can do this. And you take your time, embrace your pace. And yeah, I really love that. Like you say, if you get to the end of the row and you've got an extra stitch, just decrease it out. Yeah. It's like, it's total fuss free that, again, like you could get quite stressed about it. That you get to the end, of, I've got two stitches left and you've got to rip the whole row back. It's like, just no one will know. Right. It's fine. Yeah. It was so funny. I flew from, I was flying from uh, Boston to Riley and I was sitting with my husband. I was sitting by the window and then across the aisle, there were three ladies flying next to us and I could feel, feel myself being watched. <laughs> so eventually oh. I turned and all three of them go, oh my God, this is the most intricate thing I have ever seen. And then I came to Duke and I was in the hotel and the clue four came out and I came to the front desk and I was like, how, how can I print it out? And the woman was like, oh, just send me the file and I'll print it out. So I sent you the file and she goes, is that the knitting pattern? I'm a little bit of a knitter. And it's so amazing to have that conversation, like any place you go to, to have like instant conversation starter. Yeah, I love that. I have two things. One, um, well, three things. One, ditto to what the what the guy said about like being inspired by Steven. I think like one of the great things is that you can approach it as a newbie and just like 
you don't know what you don't know, but he's going to guide you along the way, which is really cool. I think, too, when we think about just like we collectively think about like, oh, well, that's really hard or, oh, I could never do that. For me, the MCAL and I mean, a lot of things in crafting period, there is a sense of like childhood whimsy to it where like if you can let yourself be able to get out of your own way and just like be curious again, like and maybe it's because I work with kids. So like I'm always around this kind of energy. Like if you can allow yourself to be curious again, it, it is a lot of fun because he is going to hold your hand and you're just like, OK, I'm just going along for this ride. This is going to be so awesome. <laughs> like, let's see what happens. <laughs> And then I think for me, yeah, all the reasons that everyone has said about like wanting to join the MCAL, but I, so for those that don't know, like my background is in dance. And so I've said this a bunch. Um, so if you've heard it before, I'm sorry. Um, and so for me as a former professional um, ballet dancer, like I was used to going into a studio and having someone come in the front of the room and just like teach us things. And we had no idea what it was. And you just had to like learn the steps, put it together in order to like create a bigger piece. So for me, the MCAL is very reminiscent of that. It's like, well, I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but like in the end, we're going to have this final thing that like hopefully looks amazing. I mean, usually it does. Um, yeah. And so for me, like the blindly going into it is just it it makes me feel a sense of home almost because it's like, oh, I'm so I'm this is like such a part of me, like just blindly going into something and hoping for the best in the end. <laughs> Thank goodness for those videos, even though I still mess something up watching those videos. <laughs> well, let's talk about messing up because, Martin, you've been stressing oh. out like the last clue, uh, I feel like on every row. So either the bubbles didn't align or some something. No, so I, 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 I think I was so excited to get going with the edge that I watched, I, I read the pattern. I watched the vision, like, oh, I can do that. And off I went. And then only then realized I got, I was getting all excited. And I think I did my 10th and was nowhere near the center. I was like here and I was like, no. And like that small moment apart. So in the photo, in the group chat, what's got, please tell me that the 10th one's meant to be. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> and then I basically realized that I wasn't following the pattern properly. And I've still got three of the uh, repeats, but I wasn't going, uh, I wasn't doing enough of the short rows. So now mine basic, my two, uh, main color contrast actually go over cut go over like three of the bubbles mm -hmm. whereas they should have been going over four so I'm basically not taking enough stitches off here yeah so what's the plan <laughs> well I think it's all right because the way that I've been doing them uh I've done an extra contrast and an extra main color and I now my contrast color is over the center so I think it's all right. And I've counted, if I if I go over three bubbles, by the time I get to the end, the last one will be pink. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really bothered. As long as I get to the end and it's pink, <laughs> then it's fine because it'll be balanced. When I do the big border, I'm going to have to work out then when I pick that up stitch count and make sure my stitches, I've got the right number of stitches and just make sure the waves are in the right place. But that's a problem for a few weeks time. But at one point I was so proud of myself. Like, yeah, look, look. I'm nearly halfway, woo! And then I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to undo the whole thing. And you can't just rip it out because you've got all the live stitches. And I was like, I've got to fix forward. This isn't being ripped out. I need to work out how to do it. And actually it wasn't as bad as it could have been. That's good. But lots of people commented on my video and did something similar. So I'm glad, okay, it wasn't just me then. Right. I'll probably do the same thing. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. Last year when we had to like completely redo clue one and like restart and all that stuff, and a lot of people came up with very creative solutions, right? Some people, like I know Joy did the crochet version, like a lot of people came up with their own design for it. Are you sticking to the pattern usually, or do you like to improvise and add a little bit of your own magic into it? I think it's so funny that you asked that because I'm, I was literally, the other day I was literally thinking like, oh, I kind of want to change this up a little bit and like add something or maybe add like a different pop of color, which doesn't sound extreme, but it's extreme for me. Um, 
I didn't yet though, but I think in the future I'll feel a little bit more comfortable um, doing that. Maybe after, maybe towards the end of an MCAL, like when you see what the finished object's going to look like. But um, but yeah, it's funny that you asked because I was just thinking that. I'm sticking to the pattern. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm Kevin not, follows the rules. I do. I follow the Thank rules. You. It's a recipe. I'm following the recipe. Um, I'm not. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> No additional stuff here. I've I've, I've been a, known to decrease like twelve stitches on a row because I was off a little bit, and it is what it is. It's it's fine. I am gonna stick to the pattern, uh, for like the what it is. But I looked at my mohair, and I actually have more mohair than in my twenty five gram uh skein than he does, and so I'm gonna add mine for the triangles i think once i'm about to start that hopefully this weekend so i think i'm gonna add that to the triangles and i should still have enough to like finish it where he added it um later on in the pattern right, right. that's what i'm gonna do when i get to the little bobbles i'm gonna do the bobbles in double mohair but i think is i think there's nine bobbles in total so i think i'm gonna try and make it slightly asymmetrical so i think i'm gonna have if it's nine the second one i think i'm gonna do black and green. You love that. And then the rest of the morning green. So there'll just be a little flash because my brioche, the contrast brioche has got the black fluff in it. Mm. So I think I'm going to try and bring the black fluff in at least once in the design so it kind of ties it together. That's as bad as adventurous I can go off pattern. The right. The constraint. That's the pattern. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I feel like I'm more adventurous. Like if it were a sweater, like, oh, I can change something to like make it fit my body. But like this, it's going to be a no. Like... It's too crazy as it is. And I'll end up with like a thousand stitches in a place that didn't mean to have a thousand stitches. And it's like, what Decrease are you- Decrease them out, Michael. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Decrease <laughs> But it's fine. Like I actually, like every time I go on Facebook, there is like a group where they, I think it's like something West meets uh, knitting kittens or something like that. It's yeah. like official MCAL group. And some people post their versions and I'm like, why didn't I think of that? Like there are people who don't cut yarn on every little triangle there mm -hmm. and somehow hide it. And I was like, oh, like I should have tried it, but now it's too late. And now I have like all those loose ends to hide at some point, maybe on my way back to Boston, that's what I'm going to be doing in the airplane, just hiding the loose ends. Um, <laughs> then I saw somebody using the variegated yarn, like not mm -hmm. even really, what do you call it, like when it changes colors. Uh, and oh, it's gradient. Like, right, gradient. And it's like, it has this like most beautiful, like almost rainbow effect. So many different variations that part of me wishes that I started after the MCAL was totally out to see it and to like improvise on it. So maybe that's why like some people do more than one because like mm -hmm. you yeah. do one according to the rules and then you're like, what if I change this and that and whatever, right? Yeah, that is one of the nice things, you know, just circling back to you all talking about like building this community around this, right? Like the two of you coming together and then having these, these Zooms and just like for three years, like you've gotten to know people and I think I know another cool thing about that is being able to be inspired by other people, yeah. even though you have started. So maybe, you know, maybe that gradient didn't work out for you this time, but now you have that seed planted in your head. And maybe for another project, you're like, oh, you know what? This was really cool in this format. Maybe how can I use that to inspire me for something else? And that to me is like, yeah, that's very fun to be like, oh, okay, that's really neat. Oh, okay, that's really neat. Because yeah. as many, you know, as many, um, as many shawls that are knit, knit, there's going to be a bunch of different variations on that, and everyone's going to do it in their own way. And that to me is really special. Right. Yeah, and I think like last year, someone did beads, and then this year, yeah. there's more people doing beads, um, which is a whole nother level of crazy. I can't be doing with that. They, I like, mean. They just look so teeny tiny. I'm like, I love the, I love the look of it, but I'm not adding them to mine. I don't have the eyes for it. On one of the. Oh, I didn't know you did that. Wow. I did it on the like the the middle uh, portion of it, but like it was, it it took me forever and a half to do that. So I was like, okay, one time is enough, right? It's just gonna be a little accent. 
<laughs> I cannot. I don't have the eyes for it. Like, right. no, no. Right. Well, let's ask some of our friends here to join us as well and, and share their progress. So, Man Manika, and you guys hopefully can stay with us a little longer and we can bring yeah. you back again. Um, Monique, do you want to join us? Yes. <clears throat> I've been in the Zooms many times, but haven't spoken since, um, no, yeah, until now. But I thought it might be nice to show my um, my show because I did four colors. Oh, yeah. and, um, oh, amazing. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. totally. Beautiful. And yeah. I also did one brioche and one of the eyelets. I like that. Yeah. yeah that's Beautiful. That's really interesting. So you were, you just finished day clue three, right? I they... am, no, I'm still uh, working on clue three, but I think I need to do like 10, which is more, mm -hmm. which is more. So I'm so nearly finished. What's your plan for the, like the triangles and what's your plan as far as colors go? Like, are you going to continue doing four colors for the Clue 4? I uh, I live uh, very near to Amsterdam. And today I went back to uh, Stephen and Penelope to pick up some more of the blue. Because after this Clue 3, I will be out of blue. And I thought it won't be um, that beautiful if a whole Clue 4 is without the blue so yeah. i think i will continue to do the blue as the main color and just play around a little bit with the other colors yeah that's a great that idea. sounds great i really like yours i'm gonna be curious to see it all finished up it's gonna be spectacular are yeah. you enjoying this year's uh mcal like in comparison to your you've done before right you've done the mcals before yes um but um, the two I did before, I did on the needle three and a half with uh, what Stephen says, and I didn't like my end product because it's too loose. And I've knitted a, a lot of uh, Stephen West patterns before, but never on three and a half. So the two before I gave away, and now I'm doing it at 3.25, uh, and I like it a lot more. So I think this will, might be the first one that I will keep. <laughs> um, You've earned it after all that, giving them away. I, it's a lovely gift. Yeah, I do that all the time. But um, I think the pattern is very nice. And uh, everybody was complaining about this border, but I love this border. I normally do a lot of lace knitting. And um, the border knitting of the lace is like my, my favorite thing of a whole lace shawl. It can't be long enough for me. <laughs> so you you probably prefer square shawls to rectangular shawls then, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your progress with us. Uh, Sabine, yeah. do you wanna join us? Oh, wait, you have to unmute yourself first. There we go. Yeah, cool. Um, so I'm I'm uh, almost done, and I'm um, I'm still conflicted because um, so this is this is the upper border type thing, and oh god, the rest of the I don't know. You're so fast, so fast. It's not the 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 inside thing. <laughs> Did that in a night. Um, it is really, really simple. And I can, Martin said that he wants to change the um, mohair colors. Do this because I did double out blue mohair, mm -hmm. one in blue mohair, always with the contrast color. And then the top one, I decided I want a crown because I'm a girl. Um, so I just did all mohair. That looks My great. Thing, is with the border because the 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 color stripe so fun my first inclination was i'm just not gonna do the extended border yeah 
I'm currently knitting this, which is, it's not that bad. I don't have a problem with 600 stitches, ro stitches rows, but you have to pick up one, knit one, pick up one, or, you know, yarn over one, yarn over. Yeah. Which is kind of like, a, it's a counting experience, which I don't like. And I just really that's read me, that, That's me that's going to have a problem at the end then, because we all know I can't get that's you know what? I thought in. about I saw your video I thought about you and I lost two squares or two wedges so oh, okay. no idea and I didn't do it um symmetrical I just randomly put bluish things in so I got oh, three wow. so I just wanted to end with the blue one and it should mm. be like an out one yeah um and I'm fine and the the weird the the really weird thing is the count for the first row when you pick up stitches worked out perfect. I did lose stitches, but the or I did lose wedges, but the stitches are fine. I'm on on the right stitch count. I don't even know how this happened, but we I, won't we won't question it. We'll take that as a win, and we'll just. It's go like ahead. I don't. I'm I'm not even talking about it. This is fine, fine, fine. I'm um I'm gonna do the 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 bigger border, and if I don't like it because it takes away from the striping of the inward leaning thingies, I'm just yeah. gonna. But I had to do it. I was like, I have to do this. It's the pattern. I'm gonna do the pattern. Yeah. Just, this is this is how it's supposed to go. If if I really don't like it. I'm just gonna rip a couple, cut it off because it it's gonna have more hair in it. Yep. And um, like like frogging mohair is a pain. I'm not gonna do this. I'm just gonna cut this up. But I do have like a lot of yarn left over. Okay. So I can just do border until I'm dead. In the <laughs> I would be like really grateful if you wait the uh the main color before you start the border and after you're done with it to see how much yarn is being used for the. I've used a lot of um, lace, uh, no, mohair, um, and I I had 200 main color, 200 contrast color, and 100 mohair. Right. I still have 67 of the main, 70 of the um, contrast, and somewhat like 20-ish of the mohair, so... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not concerned about the, the contrast color or mohair. I'm concerned. My only concern at the moment is the main color because I feel like I'm going to run a little short. And how much do you have left from the inner thingy with the... Well, I haven't finished the inner thingy, so I, I'm only done... This was like my yesterday progress on the plane. Are you so going to go down <laughs> half of the stitches now? Right, so I'm only, the time I'm almost done with the first repeat of this, and then there's like two more repeats of it. So it's uh, gonna hopefully consume less yarn in the other two repeats. I think the pattern says if you have a, a, a stripe, should cost you 12 grams. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't even have scale right now, so I have no idea. I'm just like eyeballing it and I'm like, ah, that looks like I'm going to be running out of yarn. We'll see. When, once I get home, I'm going to know uh, a little bit more information. Right now, I'm just yeah. like going by touch and feel sort of. But we'll see. Um, Hannah, do you want to join us? Yeah. So um, I'm done with the um, inside of the uh, scarf but yep. now I left it I don't pick up um, outside here at the edge to make the edge because I'm not sure if I have enough yarn because I want to have a matching um, head for it oh cool. now I started um, a hat and oh, wow. I will knit this with um, um, going to the um, um, yeah, the patterns um, he used. Right. And after that, I will pick up the edge so I can use all my yarn. Oh, that's so clever. 
That's going to yeah. be beautiful to see that hat. It's a good, a great idea for using your yarn. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Catherine, do you want to join us? Yes. Hello. I was, um, I was going to start a row and then I realized that every time I start a row when I'm on one of these things, I have to, or start a wedge or something. I have to undo it because I screw up somewhere along the line. So I did not. That's why um, I was doing a little bit of crochet earlier to finish around because I was like, I can't knit, I can't do one of those wedges when chat to you folks. Yeah, and I am, um, uh, I've, got, I've got four four wedges left. I'm just trying to figure out what the right side is. Um, I love your color. So that's the middle section. The little, the blue stitch marker is the center. And um, geez. Yeah, so anyway, yep. I'm, I, I think I'm going to, um, work out but Martin I screwed up somewhere in the first in, in this first section here and I can't remember what I did but it was on a zoom <laughs> and I rec realized it um uh where I, when I had was right and it was in the purple and it was in the first wedge of the purple and it was something glaring and I had to undo the the contrast color black mohair turquoise mohair and the purple mohair to get back and fix it uh and i had to do that i did one uh i i did the contrast color i think at work and then i had to go to do the black mohair and i or i did the contrast color at home and then i had to go back into work so that i could stick this underneath my uh overhead desk light and my my desk could could hold the weight of it so that I could see what I was doing. So I was at work for three extra hours on on one night undoing knitting. The poor custodian was trying to you know clean my office. And then I watched Clue Four when Clue Four came, and I was about halfway through, just passed, and I realized. Uh, and I thought, oh, this is great. I'm not so sure if I like the wavy thing, but I think I will do it and then rip it if I don't like it because I thought, well, maybe it's going to take out for this. But I had, I knew I had dropped, uh, I had done one last pass in, I think, this mohair, this section. I only had 17 I-cord stitches along the edge instead of 18. And I thought, that doesn't matter because it's just the edge. Uh, nobody will notice. So then I get back here and I see that, I'm going to have to be picking up stitches and I went back and wouldn't you know that in the black mohair I was short and I'd, I'd gone one thing back all my light colored mohair everything that I I spot checked was perfect 18 18 18 the black 17. <laughs> so I you didn't I do it again to, though. yeah so I went back and I fixed it because I am a chemist and a math person and you'll and and since then, as I've done each black section, I have put stitch markers in every six rows, so that if I see a mistake, I will only have to go back one wedge, because I have tended to where my problem is on this section, is I don't slip with yarn in front and then start from the edge and work in on the next row. I just turn my work and do an extra um, short row. Only I start the, the next row. So at the end, I haven't done that I-cord edge. I've just done the interior. So I've done all the right number of rows, but I am short one stitch. And that's probably what I did back here as well. So yeah. I've decided when I get there, I just know that these things have to have 18 stitches picked up. And then the short rows are, the 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 upside down ones are three. So I will just so make I've, sure I've, I've got, got 18 and three. I've got three and 15. So I know I'm always three stitches out, right. but I think I'll compensate that because at the end of the shawl, I'll have four extra wedges. So I think it will be okay. But if it's not, I will just put an extra, like that one, you were missing one stitch. I would have just, but there's a lot of chaos this, e this evening. Well, when you see holes, like once you see the hole, it's a because you wrapped and, and now you've created a, a, a lace hole. I can't unsee it. I'd have threaded that, a little yeah. bit. I, I, I'd have put some, I, waste yarn and <laughs> hide it somehow and, and then like there, there's definitely a way of fudging that i'm not i'm not undoing black mohair well yeah <laughs> black I, 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 if the, the black suit the, on the brioche she was like the black series going in and i'm not undoing it it will be yeah. fixed forward we'll fudge it well i, I yeah i just about cried but it, i did like it wasn't as difficult to undo the, the turquoise and the purple the black was i was swearing 
Uh, and then I was being very careful when I got to black mohair to make sure that everything I did have to then do three rows because I, but I'm three rows. So, okay. Um, but anyway, yeah, so now that's where I am and it should work out, uh, mathematically. And so I'm hoping, and I have, I haven't been able to spread it out long on a surface to see the entire, you know, how it all looks, but I, it's, it's symmetrical around there. So I figure it should be good enough. It's fine. And I, yeah. It's <laughs> but I had a yeah I had a week from hell and I I had a sorry heck I had a yeah it was a lot of late nights and so I'm still a little bit behind um and I did have to leave the last meeting because my boss we had a big meeting on Wednesday night that went till nine o'clock and um she was chairing and so we had to go through the process for it that was unusual anyway thank you very much I really appreciate it. I felt for you when I saw I saw your thing this morning and I thought oh Martin I'm so optimistic and I was just like I ended the message in the group chat. I went, it's great content for the blog. If nothing <laughs> else, it was good for YouTube. So we're fine. Okay. Yeah. But thank you. And I'm making my Christmas cake tomorrow. I'm oh. going to do one tomorrow, then one Monday, Tuesday. I think I'm, I'm, we were very hungover today. We drank way too much last night. I'm, I've not, I've not done any knitting. I've not done any baking. Nothing's happened today. It's, it's Tomorrow's going to be a magical day. <laughs> well, thanks, yeah. Kat. Patrick, do you want to join us? Yeah, so um, I was I was kind of sad that the mohair dare is more like of a like an accent than anything. I bought I bought five balls of this uh, green mohair to go with my shawl. I thought I I'm not going to use one. Maybe and I was like I was kind of upset about that, but um, I thought well, it's it's kind of a, such of a pattern that you can't really you know do it with every row. Well, I, I mean you could, but. Last year's um, shawl, I did mohair with every single stitch. So it was, it's a really thick, dense shawl. And I, I really love that about it because it mm -hmm. keeps me nice and warm in the, in the winter time. But uh, I'll just show you, I'm, I'm just um, on the second half of the um, first bit of brioche. Yeah. Um, and I, I've done the um, mohair with the, with the lighter contra contrast color. Yeah. So I'm really I'm really liking how it's turning out. But uh yeah, not much progress since uh Tuesday, but I'm working I'm working on it. So I like that light green. Yeah, I, I had kind of a kind of a spiritual experience with um grass this summer and it was like connecting with grass in a in a kind of an unusual um spiritual sense. Um <clears throat> and kind of having kind of a a strange sense of compassion for when it gets cut every every day in a mindless sense with people pushing their lawnmowers and I thought that grass has some kind of quality to it and <clears throat> when I saw that when when I saw this kit I thought I'm going to carry that spirit of the grass into into this into the shawl because I thought this color just reminded me of that uh, connection so I know it's kind of unusual but uh, yeah it was just uh I, I've just kind of had a crazy summer with my work burning down and then my car getting stolen and I've kind of decided to look at some of the smaller details in life and um, connect with that. So that's kind of helped me through the summer. So, Patrick, can you do me a favor? Can you email me your mailing address and I'm going to forward it to Eva. So she wanted oh. to give. Yeah, so absolutely. Thank you very much. Just email it to me and I'll forward it to her. Uh, Joy, do you want to join us? Hello. Hi. Hey. It was so lovely to see you. Ed. Yes, likewise, I likewise, and I've seen the three guys too. It's only you, Martin, that I haven't seen yet in person. I know. <laughs> I Ryan back. Yeah, you know, I know, I know, I know. So far away from the UK. Though. <laughs> yes, and I want to say hi to Maya as well. I see her here. Yeah, Maya uh, was lovely to see you there as yes. well. well. Let's let's add Maya as well. <laughs> Maya, Hold on. Yeah. So I'm um, way. I'm Maya, so far you... behind. I'm so far behind. So I just finished Clue 1 last night. And then I, I, I was looking at Clue 4. And I decided maybe I should do Clue 4 first because it's easier. Now I have two live edges. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely an option. Like I actually see a lot of people on Facebook doing just that. They like yeah, they clue, four. clue 4 and then they leave the Clue 3 for later. to, to yeah. just Because like you, you could do that, right? Like yep, yep. I hadn't and, thought about that. Get the big board out of the way first. Yeah. And because I needed to know if I have enough yarn. Right. And, uh, yep. 
And I don't know, because each time I finish a few sections, a few stitches, I always stop and admire my colors. I do love it. I do love it very much. And then I'm, uh, I added the, the turquoise, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add two more. Oh, that's for cool. the bubbles. So, so how colorful. many colors are you using? Um, so far five. I have the the uh the main color, the contrast color, and then I added these three plain ones, solid. Right. So um, yeah, any I'm crochet? looking for one more. I, yes, I, I think I'm going to crochet instead of doing that wavy border. I'm going to crochet something. I have yeah. to look for something first. I'll be very curious to see that one. Yeah. Maya, how many colors are you using? Um, I have my main contrast and two mohair colors. So I'm um, almost done with clue three because I was traveling. I went to Rhinebeck and now I'm actually visiting my daughter in Iowa, but I did bring the shawl with me. So that's my, um, I have probably like nine uh, nine triangles left so i'm i'm alternating my um contrast color with more hair okay. so i have the beginning has um has my dark color mm -hmm. uh, and then i don't know this looks lot of, so that's a darker one then i marl two shades of more hair and then the end will have those like the light okay. one and I can't wait to get to those tiny bubbles because I did them in Fiberfest show. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I so, love them. They are fun. They're like a little bit fiddly to like do the three together for the back. I think they look so adorable. So I really I used the tightest okay. yarn for that. Mm -hmm. Like if you guys can see, and every one is a different color, and I love, love, love that. Cute. Yeah. yeah. So, like, so um, yeah, like I'm tempted to do the same, like to go. I really want to get to them, but I only have, I think I'm almost done, so I probably will finish. Um, and then I am going to do the wavy border. But now, actually, when Joy mentioned that she may crochet it, I'm like, hmm, I should maybe think about that. <laughs> Well, it was so great to see both of you at Ryan back, and thank you for spotting me and coming to say hello. It was lovely to see you. It's really. fun. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Diane, do you want to join us? Just unmute yourself. Yeah. There, finally got it. Um, I'm actually making two shawls. Ooh. This one is almost done. I love that. Yep. I've got two shades of mohair in here, and I bet you can see them. Mostly the pale green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carried with the contrast color, and the light is my contrast color in this shawl. Yep. And then I have some white mohair also in one of the brioche sections. So it just changes the color ever so slightly, because you can't even really see it. So then I have a lace one, which I'm kind of like, uh, have I lost my mind? This is um, cotton silk blend and linen silk with sequins. Oh, that's so cool. And I've done the eyelets with this because I just didn't think the brioche would work. Right. With quite the heavy. Key, tiny, yeah. It, I mean, this is just light as a feather. I love that. Can you see the sequins at all? Um, a little bit, yeah. Oh, well, it's yeah. It's really fun when I'm sitting here working oh, on it and the little that? sparkles just kind of come up into my face and it just gives me joy. Yeah. Um, I've got a bunch of mistakes, which is kind of unusual for me. Um, I didn't watch all of the video when I started the triangles. I just thought, okay, how does he want me to join him? So I'll join him that way. So I've got like 
10 at the beginning where the pearl side is joined the wrong way. <laughs> Instead of the SSK, I did the knit two together because I mean, I, I watched the video, but he, he doesn't, it's not in the pattern, which is kind of annoying. Oh, I didn't know. That. Yeah, because yeah, if you don't, what if you don't have access to video? You got a piece of paper in your hand and you're traveling. It doesn't say anything about how to close those short rows. Oh. Huh. I don't know if you guys noticed that. It's knit two together on one side, on the knit side. And, and then actually on the other, yeah. Yeah. So I totally missed that. And then I was worried about um, the triangles because I don't have triangles. I have squares. Arena, you have squares too. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming to like as a square. I mean, I'm not quite done with it, but it's like, it looks like a square. But see, you and I have both very high contrast colors. Yeah. So the ones where the, co the the colors are a little bit more muted, you see the triangles. In ours, you don't see the triangles. And mine's it's, probably going to come out and be, because they're high con. so I guess mine will be. Yeah, I bet yours yeah. come out like squares too. Oh, mm -hmm. Like I did, because I, I'm not done with it yet. I was like trying to find those triangles, but I didn't see them. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen. Yeah, really you, you, won't, you won't see them unless you really try really hard to find them. We didn't make any mistakes. We, you know, knitted it as written, but it just doesn't look the same with the different colors. Interesting. Um, when that clue first came out on Thursday, I was like, oh my God, he's outdone himself this year. Remember last year when we were all so, oh my God, what are we going to do now? I'm going to quit. I'm not going to quit. I'm not, I don't want to do this. Why, why is everybody, you know, have got such a problem with the pattern? So I think he really worked hard this year. Yeah, I, really I, love like the, I, I really like the look of the finish show. There, there were moments when I didn't enjoy the knitting of it, but like, I really wow. like how it looks, even when I'm not loving the process. At, at it's moment. so very yeah. architectural kind of looking. Um, <laughs> Frank Lloyd Wright, that, you know, that whole vibe. Yeah. So it, it's different, but not different from what he designs typically. Right. No, it's this was just a great surprise to have something brilliant at the end. Yeah. Um, Lonnie, do you want to join us? Just unmute. Unmute yourself. Yeah. 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 OK. Um, yeah, I'm finished with the clue three and just started today with the clue four. Okay. So, uh, yeah. You're going to use more hair there in clue four, you think? Yes, I will. I have, uh, yes, I will. I will use my light, um, pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like red. Yeah. That I also used, um, for the, the yes, in the brioche. Nice and um, like you, I will. I will definitely run out of my blue. So <laughs> you have a plan for this this squiggly border? Like, what's your plan? Um, I had the. Uh, I thought that I will make the big one, but uh, that depends on how much blue I will have left. But yeah. then I will think I will use some more hair, put in, uh, together with my um with my um contrast color okay yeah i think i'm gonna do that because i have more than a... come, yeah if any of you guys gonna approach the last border i would highly appreciate if you weigh your main yeah. before you you yeah. start when you're yeah. done just to get an idea because like i'm trying to get an idea of how much yarn you would need for that yes yeah. okay mia yeah. do you want to unmute yourself Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm not finished with my clue three, but I'm knitting on it. That's, that's how it looks currently. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I uh, have, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, uh, I have my 
my other color uh, in the eye cord. I don't know if you can see this, but um, I don't cut it every wedge. I have it in the eye cord and uh. it works great because I don't want to um, sew in uh, every wedge um, for itself. And yeah. um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, oh, I had COVID uh, this week, and so my my voice is not the best. Oh, uh, yeah. That's that's the reason why I can't uh, uh, why I uh, don't have the time for for so much knitting this week. Um, but now I feel a bit better, and so I think I've uh, I thought I've joined yeah, good. this Thank you for meeting. And. Thank you. Um, yeah and uh i when when i watch uh, the video on um thursday um i was very happy how it uh, how it, the shawl will finally look yeah. and um i'm i think i will knit the baby border in the end and um it's it will need time but i think it will look great and i think it looks so um, art deco ish. Is this a word? I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I I like the the shawl this year very much, and I'm happy that I'm um, yeah, that that I had uh started and yeah. No, it's beautiful. I'm yeah, glad you shared your process with us. Um, yeah. Nikki, do you wanna join? hear me yes hey how are you uh, i don't have much to add since wednesday i've been sick as well but um i did i think i'm on my 11th wedge um i did after five of each do my count and it's perfect i have just you know the perfect amount of stitches left um also i want to say how exciting it was to have kevin and ray and michael here that was awesome of you guys to do that and has anybody checked the stitch count for clue four? Like I thought when he filled in the top, I was like, that is so cool. And then I was like, there's still like 40 minutes of video left. What the hell? Going <laughs> <laughs> I'm like 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 40,000. What is going on here? <laughs> like there's so much knitting. Yeah, it's like the fourth clue has a lot of knitting in it. So it's gonna I saw a, a graph I saw a graph somewhere and I can't find it again since, but I think it's some someone worked out for the last five years. This is the biggest stitch count and the biggest for the uh, since we um for the last five. So it's definitely a big week. Well, I mean, luckily for all of us, we still have a few humans of West needs, so no rush. Please make your progress and please share it with us. So the next yep. one. No, I'm I'm excited, but yeah, it's just a lot of knitting. Right. Uh, Nancy, do you want to join us? Yeah, I just wanted to really show my colors because that's what I'm happiest about. And Stephen's just, I'm so happy with how he's ending this. And I don't know if it shows. Here's my wedges. It's a navy and green. Mm -hmm. And... I think I see triangles. I can't decide. Does it show? Yeah, I can see the triangle in yours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's really, the whole thing is like an optical illusion. You just, the longer you stare at it, one minute you see the rectangles and then you see the triangles or, I, I mean, the triangle part is stacking it on the front. Is that what right. yours is, Irina? Because yeah. I can't really see it on yours in the video. Yeah, it's you know, and the it's and the garter is goes to a triangle too. Yeah, I don't know. Like I'm now, I'm gonna be looking. Oh yeah, I see. So it I, have, I, I, I can see. Now, I can see. I think once once you've done the repeat, I think it will. Right. Yeah, definitely be more pronounced. And I know that math wise, it looks like a triangle, but I can't really see it yet. The colors are. A, a square or a rectangle, but the stitch definition is the triangle. So it's kind of like, but yeah, I'm not quite far enough along. And oh my yeah, I'm goodness. like now, now I like now I want to drop everything and start knitting that <laughs> the, the triangle. Oh, I love you've these. Got go back to, you've got to go back to the beach. Yeah, I'm I got to do something my, else with these little my, bubbles. 
So my parents are throwing me a birthday party today and they invited all their friends to come to my birthday. So it's going to be interesting. Um, But yes, after we're done here, that's going to be my uh, continuation of my birthday celebration. I somehow managed to celebrate it in three different states. And thank you for all of you who sent me. Happy birthday. Is it today? It was yesterday. So oh, it was yesterday. Five yesterday, done with that number, on to the next. And on to the next. It was, it was a good year, so no complaints. Um, you're here and you're smiling at the moment. So yeah, congratulations. It, you know, <laughs> life is much better than the alternative, so no complaints there. Um, I'm going to let Catherine join us for a second, and then I want to say uh, goodbye to Kevin, Ray, and Michael, so we're going to add them uh, after Catherine. Hi, yeah, yeah, I'll be quick. I know it's time. I haven't got much more to add on the shawl. I've just started on um, Clue 4, 4 here. I did I did a lot of discussion on the Ravel, Ravelry group. Uh, if you use mohair in these tiny bubbles, people are finding it really difficult to uh, pick up the three loops. So everyone's uh, recommend, recommending to knit it really, really, really loose. Um, if you could, I could, I'm going to do mohair my next one. The first, first one I didn't, but my next one I will. But I did want to say to the other Catherine, in, in the black mohair, mohair, I highly recommend one of these uh, um, LED lights. Yes, okay. It's helped um, really help me in a lot of situations and stops um, the rest, rest of my family getting annoyed with me. I don't have to have a big light, big light, so I have this as well. I've got <laughs> well, a big searchlight, a marquee. He just, he, I, I put it on and he just rolls his eyes. He's like, oh, really? <laughs> it's like, it's all, it's yeah. like it's it's cozy candles on and then the big light. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think those on the plane, and it's like life saving because, like, mm-hmm. uh, the overhead light sometimes hard to reach and it bothers the neighbors. This is like perfect. It's like lights just your knitting. So, highly recommend that toy for your Christmas list. Uh, I want to add, thank you, Catherine. I want to add um, Kevin Ray and Michael. Uh, I got him. Oh, and... hi, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I did him also. Like there we oh, go. Here he is. It's hard to find. We have so many people yeah. here. Thank you, everybody, <laughs> for joining us, and thank you guys for making time for us. It's always lovely to have like all the combination of different YouTubers join together and collaborate and. It was a joy seeing you on the hill. And I hope one day Martin is going to join us on Ryan Back Hill because that would be awesome. He has a. Open if invitation. Martin wants to host, you know, maybe Martin wants we to host a to retreat or something like that up in his way. We'll we we can head do. out. All so come to the UK. Yeah, yeah what's on the, is Unraveled in the UK? Is that correct? Unravel, yeah. Yeah. In February. Hmm. <laughs> three day, it's, a, it's a three day show. Oh, we'll just fly up for the weekend. And yeah, then no, three days. Let's do it. Se- Let's do a the little... September one is only two days, but the spring one is like the big one. Um, yeah. Okay, Michael, Martin, road trip. And that's <laughs> yeah. amazing. Uh, it just might surprise you, right? <laughs> It'd be amazing. <laughs> Um, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, it's been really great, like watching everybody's progress and like being able to hear some of your stories and choices. I think that's the, really the fun part of this. One yeah. thing I just want to add: we usually go after Ryan Beck. We usually go to uh, Fiber Festival of New England, and it's really neat because it's only like two weeks after Ryan Beck, or basically two weeks after the Clue Four comes out. And we see people wearing their finished shawls yes. um, from the MCAL. And it's really, really neat to to see those finished and to, to see some of you all being so close in the choices that you made. I think it's really exciting, you know, and inspirational. I'm going to be there this year because, well, first of all, I've done a lot, a lot of um traveling this year somehow my husband was trying to calculate all the amount of trips i've done and it was like 11 plus somehow we don't talk about those no, we yeah. don't talk about that but also like my daughter is coming for an interview on november 1st and then my son's girlfriend is arriving so it's like it's going to be full house so i don't know if i can make it to the uh, new england fiber festival mm-hmm. but i usually love it it's really well organized and it's indoors and they have wine testing so if you guys are considering <laughs> Like highly recommend that sure. festival. I'm actually going to Barcelona. So if anybody is going to be at Barcelona Yarn Festival, please find me and say hello. I would love to. Dorothy's very excitedly waving. 
cool. Yeah, I, I, I'm coming there. So I'm, I'm actually going to see a Stevie Tejido. So he's like, he was excited to know that I'm coming and I'm super excited to see him in his hometown and um, get to hang out with him and maybe have some tapas. And so, mm, um... yeah. Actually, I'm now getting excited about my trip to <laughs> Barcelona. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for joining us today. It was lovely to see you at Rhinebeck, and it was even more lovely to have you on our Zoom. Yeah, and... thanks for making the time to join us. Yeah, oh, no, sure. thank you for having us. It was no really... fun. Yeah. Thank you. And next one is going to be Wednesday at 12. Use the same uh, Zoom ID and the same password. So join us next Wednesday to show your uh, progress on the show. We're not done yet. And we might have another surprise guest. We're working on it, right, Martin? Um, so stay tuned for that announcement. And of course, uh, we have Needles at the Ready. They're on YouTube. We have Peace for Peace uh, podcast. Michael on YouTube, Martin is Need365 blog, and I'm um, this Fiber Chats. Give us a subscribe, hit that subscribe button. It's easy, it costs nothing, it's fast for you, and it helps us reach yep. our target audience. And till next time, happy crafting, everyone. And thank you yeah, for Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye for now. Bye.